Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing great. Today's video is going to look at Biomorpher. What is Biomorpher? Biomorpher is a plugin for Grasshopper that lets you look at optimizing your design. And let's look a little closer at that. So here in the viewport, I have a form. And if I wanted to generate multiple design iterations, I would have to go in here and I would have to move around some of my number sliders. And you see it's a very slow process in terms of what's being changed and I have to do this manually for each number slider. Well, Biomorpher will automatically make some design generations for me and then I can select from those design generations selecting what I think is the best option. Okay, before we jump into the tutorial, just wanna remind you if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. My goal right now in the short term is 5,000 subscribers. I am so close. I'm about 40 subscribers away and by the time I make my next video I think we can celebrate the 5,000 subscribers. So there's a lot here on my channel. Lots and lots of videos. I think you'll find many of them to be of interest to you. My one from last week is doing well, diagrams using Rhino 3D. So go ahead and click on the subscribe, click on the little bell, and select all the notifications. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name Alfonso underscore my last name Peluso. See what I'm up to with my students. We just finished a presentation in my design communications class, students using Rhino. The diagramming video in Rhino is also doing pretty good here on Instagram. So see what I'm up to by connecting with me on Instagram. Okay, back over to Biomorpher. So we're going to go through and set up what I've set up here. But before we do that, I just want to give you another sneak preview. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just generate some designs and you'll see some changing in the Rhino viewport and then you'll see some information here which we will explain in greater detail in a little bit. And then when I go over to my designs, I can see my design options. So you saw how fast Biomorpher was able to generate those options. And if I like any of these options, I can double click and that option will be displayed in Rhino. Okay, let's get to it. I'll take this definition and I'm just going to hide all of that and give us some room here. So I don't have much here under my outline other than set limits and set performance. So I can't emphasize how important setting the limits is for this and we'll see this limits for those number sliders. Uh, limits in your design so that you can use Biomorpher most effectively. So let's let's jump into that. So we're going to work fairly small scale. We're going to start by making some ellipses and the size of the two radii for the ellipses. This is where I'm going to start to set my limits. So I'm going to go ahead. I want to give myself some decimal places. So I'm going to say from 0, less than 9.000, okay, giving myself some, some decimal places, so between 0 and 9. Okay. Go ahead and increase that number slider so you see the one radius there. And I can copy and paste this and plug it into my second radius. 
Okay. So there's our first ellipse. And what we're going to do is we're going to create more, two more. And we're going to stack them in the Z direction. So I can take this and copy and paste it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a point that raises this ellipse in the Z direction. Okay, there is a, a second ellipse. Now you see it there as I change these settings. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a point. So I'm going to construct a point. And to get my shortcut to get that capsule is XYZ. And I'm going to choose construct point. And I'm going to give it a Z value. Now this is somewhere else I'm also going to want to set the limits for this. And for right now, I'm going to set those between, I'm going to set this between 2.000, give myself some decimal places, and 5.000. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that's going to, we'll see this in a second. So that range of motion is going to be between 2 and 5. And we can go back and, and change this at any point, but just for right now, stressing that we're setting the limits. Okay, so my third ellipse, I'm going to take all this, copy and paste it. Okay, now for these limits, I want, I want this ellipse, you see this ellipse is in the same spot as the second one. I want to raise this up. So I'm going to right click and go into values and I'm going to set the minimum. I'm going to have some overlap in this. So I'm going to set this from 4.000 for that setting actually yeah, that's the minimum. And then the max, I'm going to set this to 9. Okay, I'll commit changes. Take a look at this. Make sure it's working correctly. Okay. All right, so those are my ellipse. And I'm going to take a moment to do some alignments here. So I did a pretty good job setting it up. It looks pretty well organized, but I'm going to refine it just a little bit more just align these capsules and I'm sure many of you out there can appreciate this I'm sure that you you're doing some of that on your own okay, I'll align these two all right that looks pretty good all right oh, someone just chimed in and liked something on Instagram Okay, so let's let's use a loft to loft between these ellipses. Okay, so we're just getting our initial form set up. There you have that. Okay, now Biomorpher, the geometry needs to be mesh, and there's many ways to convert B reps or nerve surfaces two meshes. So right now this is a, a surface coming out of that. I'm going to double click and I'm going to use mesh B rep. I'll go ahead and plug that in. And there we have our mesh. Okay, and I'm going to add a custom preview to this. And that's just using a default color. Okay, now uh, in, in one of my classes recently, my students and I were looking at the default color for the custom preview, which is this, what I call the Pepto-Bismol pink. And one of my students said, well, that's because that color is the default because architects, architecture students are using the foam insulation that you buy at Home Depot for so many of their models. I don't know if that's true, but that's one student's theory. Okay, so we've, we've set some limits. Now we're going to set the performance. So the performance, in this case, we're just going to use area. What is the area of the mesh? And that's going to be what we're looking for in terms of performance when we go over to Biomorpher.
All right, we're ready. We're ready for Biomorpher. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. So I mentioned Biomorpher is a, is a free plugin. Um, I didn't mention it was free. I mentioned it was a plugin. So where can we get Biomorpher? Let's, uh, let's have a look. Let's go over to Google here and let's search Bio. I don't know if Biomorpher is enough. Yeah, look at that. Biomorpher is enough and we can go over to Food for Rhino. So we can get that here. And we can thank a couple people here. Um, I don't see I don't see John's name. I believe his name is John. I see that he's given credit to Cecile Osh, uh, Olson, and maybe I'm just missing it here. But uh, let's go over to Biomorpher, and when you install it, you'll get a couple capsules. We're going to look at the interactive genetic algorithms for Grasshopper capsule. I'm just going to place that out here. And I don't have anything plugged in. I wonder if it's going to open uh, once things plugged in. All right, so we'll 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 get John's name. I think it's John Hardy. I think I got it as I was as I was talking, thinking about it. We'll see if I'm right in a little bit. John Hardy, I think, is is the developer of this uh, plugin. And um, so you can get it from Food for Rhino. You download it. It's free. Pretty easy to install. Now I did come across some interesting. Uh, interesting people using Biomorpher, and I thought this one was really great because, you know, I'm I'm an architect, and my my students are are architecture students, and to see somebody using Grasshopper and Biomorpher for making a robot generator, I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if this is for gaming, I'm not sure, but here's the Biomorpher window that we looked at at the beginning of this tutorial. So I thought I thought that was pretty <clears throat> pretty cool and. Shout out to Lee Souter, maybe is how you how you pronounce his name. And uh, I was showing his his web page here to my my generative design students, and they seem pretty interested in his work. And I, I think his his 3D modeling capabilities is pretty awesome. So if you're interested, check out his work. Okay, back to Biomorpher. So Biomorpher needs it needs some things plugged in here. So if you're familiar with Galapagos, which is that's the built-in evolutionary solver in Grasshopper. If you've used that before, this may seem familiar to you. If you haven't, I have a video on my page on, Galap on Galapagos, and there'll be a link at the end of this video that you can a thumbnail that you can click on and go to that. Okay, so what what do we have? We have our performance. Okay, we have that. That's the, that's the area in this case. We have our mesh. Now our genomes. Our genomes are, are the number sliders. That's what Biomorpher is going gonna, is gonna to slide around automatically to create the design iterations. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm, gonna, I'm pretty good at plugging in from a far distance. I hope so. I'm going to use my shift key here. So I'm going to make sure all these number sliders get plugged into that. Alright, hopefully I'm not double plugging anything. I don't think it lets you anyway, so probably nothing to be scared of there. Alright, a couple more of these. Not bad from a long distance, huh? Okay. All right, so hopefully that that works out well. Okay, so we've got that. We've got those number sliders plugged in. We have our mesh. We have our performance. All right, so let's go ahead and double click on this Biomorpher capsule, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here so that we can see what's happening over in Rhino. Okay, so population size. I'm just going to use the default for right now, 64, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. There's a crossover rate and a mutation rate. Okay, and we'll talk about those in a little bit as well. So right now I'm just leaving everything to the default. I'm going to show all 12 cluster uh, clusters in the history. I'm not going to disable the grasshopper preview because this model is pretty small, so it should go really fast. 
So this is using a random initial population. So it doesn't care what the number sliders are set to. This is using the current number slider state. And this is using a supplied population. So we're going to go with just a random. And we're going to click on that. We saw some things happen in Rhino. And you see some things here in Biomorpher. So Biomorpher will only show you 12 clusters at one time. So each one of these is considered a cluster and we're starting with the number 0 to 11, so 12 clusters. Now in each cluster there is a number there's a number um, of generations we'll call them. And the number of generations total here in the 12 clusters will add up to the population size. And you have to count the the lines going out. So in, in this cluster there's one, two, three, four, five, plus the initial one in the center, six. So in this one there's one, two, three, and this one there's one, two. So all these will add up to 64. Now to actually see the designs, I click on the designs tab there. And it's showing me 12 designs essentially that I can I can choose from. Now, some things to look at. Here is the performance. This is the area. And by default, it's not set to optimize the area or the performance yet. But what it is showing me is it's showing me a minimum and maximum of that area. And it's doing that with a little circle around the dot. Okay, so I imagine this is the minimum. Let's see if I click on this. If I click on a little check mark. Okay, and I double clicked on it. So, well, double clicking it was the important thing there because it brought me to that design. Shows it to me in Rhino. Says the area is 129. Now, uh, and this is this is I'm guessing the larger one. So I'm going to double click on that. 425. So it's showing me the the largest and the smallest area with the circles around the dots. Okay, so here is where me as a designer, I can say, well, I don't like any of these and I can have it <clears throat> regenerate or I can start to narrow down my design based on ones that I like. And this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm orbiting around in Biomorpher and it's actually orbiting in all these viewports. So you can get a better better look at these okay so let's say number three is the one I want to I want to iterate some more and look a little closer at it so I'm going to click on the check mark and what I can do is I can click on evolve and it's going to give me new generations and new populations based on this one that I'm selecting so I go ahead and click on evolve and now they start to look more similar. And I can look at these in Rhino, or I can look at them in Biomorpher. Okay, so what, what else is happening here? Well, we're starting to get a history of these iterations. Okay, so let's, let's keep going with it. So this is, this is our first Let's see what it calls it. So Biomorpher calls it generations. Okay, so this is our first generation here. And this is where the initial 12 designs, and then it highlights the one that we selected to further investigate. So it's giving us some, some really good graphics that we can use later on. Okay, so now out of these, if there's a specific one that I like, let's say, well, I really like the way that this one is, is kind of, I'm getting this nice pinch in it, where some of the other ones are more rounded. Uh, these two are, are pretty similar here. So I'm going to click on the check mark for that, and I'm going to click on Evolve. Okay, so some more design options. So you see there's starting to get less and less variance between these, okay, so as we start to hone in on it. Now, let's say that, well, now these are all too similar. I want to introduce some variety in these. Well, if I go back to population, 
I have a couple things here. One is a crossover rate and one is a, muta a mutation rate. So I'll tell you, I had to, uh, I had to Google these and uh, I'm an architect and even Googling these didn't really help me out too much. <laughs> but with the crossover, it's talking about two parents. So combining the gen genetic information of two parents to generate new offspring. Okay, so some new offspring there. And then there's also mutation. A okay, mutation is a change in DNA, the hereditary material of life. So, a change in an organism, organism's DNA can cause changes in all aspects of its life. Okay, and what I've, what I've come to uh, see in Biomorpher is we get some genetic, not, not genetic, but some random, random values introduced and some random variations in it. So we're going we're gonna to use the crossover and the mutation. And, you know, this is something you would have to, you would have to experiment with. All right, let me get my... My biomorpher window back up. Okay, so as w what we're looking at is we're looking at designs that are really similar, really similar. So going back to this population now, the go these go buttons won't do anything at this point. That's that's only done at the initial stage. Now it's just evolving. But I can change the crossover rate. I'm just going to increase that and increase the mutation rate. And I'm going to go to my designs and I'm going to click on evolve. Now I have to select one that I want to evolve. So let's go. I like this one here. Let's go with that one. Let's evolve that one. Okay, so now we're back to getting some variations in there with the mutation and the and the crossover. What's happening in our, our history? So as you're seeing we're getting all this to show up in our history, which is nice. Biomorphers keeping a nice graphic for us that we can we can end up saving. We're also getting a plot. And this plot is based on our performance on our left. So it's showing some minimum and maximum of area. And then the ones that we selected, it's, it's creating a, a, a graph of the ones that we've selected. Okay, now let's, let's look a little bit further into this still. Okay, so now you, I've been clicking on Evolve, and you might have noticed that there's a plus one, or uh, you know, I can plus that, or I can minus that. So these are evolving with multiple generations at once, instead of one generation at a time. And to do that, you do have to, you can't leave it as no optimization. You either have to minimize or maximize. So let's go ahead and minimize in this case. And now it's going to generate three, three additional generations. So let's pick one of these. This, this one looks pretty good. Yeah. Let's go ahead and evolve. So now when that was one generation, here's the second one and the third one. Okay, so it it went through three generations and now we're at generation six. So to, to, to see those generations that it created, I have to go in my, my chart here and you can see it, uh, it selected its own as it, as it generated through those. And then I can go in and, and reinstate some of these that I, that I like. So I think this is really cool and here's a, here's a plot of that. And for those of you who have used Galapagos, you see that this gives you a lot more functionality, especially when it comes to selecting designs that you want and just having those be generated in the Rhino viewport. All right, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, I guess one more thing that I think is really cool is that this these designs here, you can save those as a PNG, so it'll it'll output the this whole image as a as a graphic as a PNG. All right. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click on the like below. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Click on the little thumbnails that pop up on the screen. Click on my head. That'll get you to subscribe. And I will see you next time.